Interview and Job Search Strategies at Work, episode 23. And this one, I just want to really, I uh, really be quick here. What I want to talk about, or to say, that's what I'd say, is um, about jobs with like Google and Facebook, for instance, right? Those two, particularly. Those are, by the way, those are like awesome, awesome, awesome companies. So my research comes from what? My research comes from, I lived in the area um, for about five months when I was out there doing a project. This is last year. And also my research comes from YouTube, you know, and talking to people, physically talking to people who used to work uh, in that area, who've done, who've done the Facebook interviews, who've done the Google interviews, um, who's worked at like places like Motorola, for instance. So here's the cool part about, I guess, working at Google, if I would say. The cool part is um, when you get there, Facebook and Google, right? Um, when, you, when you get there, like let's say you park somewhere, there's a parking lot, not at Google or Facebook site, but maybe um, nearby, there's a, there's a bus service that it's Wi-Fi, right? So there's Wi-Fi on the bus, it's cushion, it's air conditioned, you go to work, you're dropped off at Facebook, and you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner at these places. Free, right? It's free. That's the key. It's free. Uh, I mean, it's awesome. They, yeah. Um, and I, I've driven around like the campuses of Facebook and also uh, Google, and they have like I mean, it's no deal. It, no, um, I mean, no kidding. It's um, uh, yeah. It's there's a there's a full on kitchen. Like, um, on the back side, when I drove around on Google, for instance, right, there's, you know, there's um, trucks out there with food, you know, that delivering food, like, every day. It's like a, it's like, um, like a college campus, right? Like, you might have a cafeteria in a college, and they have to supply food every day. I'm sure they do a lot more meals than that, but, yeah, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Google and Facebook, so, um, anyway... Yeah. So that's the cool part. The other one is, if you want an oil change, they have a, uh, like for instance at Facebook, with my own eyes I saw, there was a, a little tent they set up, and they will, um, you give the company your keys, your car, and they will change your oil for you while you're at work. Really? Really? That's like, thank you, appreciate it, yeah, that's super, yeah, that's awesome. So. Okay, so now, now the second-hand knowledge, right? The second-hand knowledge is this. You, first day on site, you arrive, you get there, um, your, your laptop, your computer, at your work desktop, your cubicle, if you will, it's, it's ready for you. Oh, you need a bigger monitor, you need another monitor, or a dual monitor, okay, we'll take care for you. The next day, it's there. Oh, I need papers, pens, pencils, whatever. Oh, there's a little cart that's um, in the aisle. Okay, just go and get what you want. I mean, that's that's it right there, literally. Really, that's it. Oh, um, you need snack? Okay, there's a snack room. You know, cough, uh, soda, chips, cookie, candy, um, probably little breakfast uh, sandwiches. I know they, they, they didn't say that part, but I assume it's that. But they did say, you know, cookies, candy, chips, soda, in the break room. Go ahead, just, okay, go. The, the meetings are catered. If you have to stay late, the meetings are catered. Look, like, they will cater your meeting, meaning they bring in food at your meeting. Like, really? Like, that is so cool, by the way. Like, wow, that's, phew. There's, yeah, I mean, imagine what that does for your, uh, your work environment, like everything's, I'm here, I'm good, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm awesome, this is perfect, you know, why do I need to leave, right, um, so I, I haven't, I don't know, uh, this person didn't tell me about nap rooms, but I had read on the, or I saw on YouTube where they have nap rooms and uh, massage rooms and places, um, like meditation rooms, I've seen that, and anyway, that that's like, phew, wow, yeah, that's the that's the cool part, by the way, of living in in that area and working in those those places. 
Um, so now, now the other thing, now the other side, right? Like, oh man, right, right. Okay. So here we go. Here's the here's the the downside. And I mean, this is obviously me looking at it from the outside, not me actually working there. And this is secondhand knowledge from working in another place, not Facebook and Google, uh, but places like it. Is this in that area? People live an hour away. Some people live, you know, because the cost of living is like, wow, you know, it's a lot. It's it's a lot of money to live in that area nearby where you work at, right? And Facebook and Google and all that. Um, any rate. So a lot of folks live in like Sacramento, they live in um, Gilroy, uh, they live in a uh, little north of San Francisco, not San Francisco, north of that. They live in, well I think that's Santa Rosa, I think that's the name of the city. They, um, yeah, they live in uh, Livermore, that's near, not nearby, but it's, you know, so what they do is they, there's no, well, is there a train? I don't think, there's no, I think there might be a train, but I know there's definitely a train from like Livermore to the uh, nearby Google and Facebook, like a train, like there's a train, right? I mean, that you take to go to work. So the reason being, right, um, it's just a lot of traffic, right? And it's like, it's not because of, um, it's not because of the, the distance, or I mean, it doesn't take you like an hour distance-wise. Well, no, yeah, it does take you an hour distance-wise, but it'll take you a little longer, maybe an hour, hour and a half, or, or sometimes two hours, right, um, to get to work, going there, right, by traffic sometimes, depending on what time of the day you go. Uh, and getting back is the same thing, you know, the amount of time to get back. So a lot of people, what they do is they they take a train to like um, nearby Facebook. There's a bus station. I forget the name of the station, but there's a not a bus station, a train station near um, uh, nearby where Facebook's at. And then Facebook will pick you up in their bus, company bus, this big you know nice plush bus, and they'll drive you to Facebook's campus, and they'll drop you off right and you get out and do your you know go to get your breakfast or whatever I mean imagine that everything is there so people do is sometimes they bring extra set of clothes maybe workout clothes because there's a gym there as well and actually matter of fact behind Facebook there's like a little like um, outdoor recreational thing like a uh, it's like a little not a park it's a little exercise park it's like right behind Facebook's campus actually like right behind it and Facebook's all different um, the, the the colors of the building they're different you know different colors the used to be the old Sun Microsystems building is what they bought so if you look at the if you go to the Facebook sign if you're out there and you look behind the Facebook sign you'll see like a logo for like Sun Sun Microsystems they used to own that building and it's right off of like um, right right over the bridge to the, to the right there, that's where Facebook's at. Yeah, it's uh, pretty nice. Across the street, I think, they might have their... There's another facility they own. I know that. Um, at any rate, um, so that... So the reason... So the reason you're like, oh, why, why don't they work from home? Well, I don't know why they don't work from home, but I know that um, a lot of those places... And, and, and probably so, because they're probably worried about intellectual property. Uh being compromised right so you know that's probably why they everybody works uh, there in the office not everybody but for the most part a lot of folks work in the office they don't have that work from home thing so so basically so that's probably the not so sexy side of it basically is this you're there five days a week so you know I mean everything you don't have to worry about anything you're already you're, you're done you're good. Everything is taken care of. Your food and all that. And I know some places even have a daycare as well. So that's like um, about two thousand dollars a month, I think, it would have cost for daycare. But I mean, just imagine, right? Your your person teaching you youngin is 
working for Google and they're like a PhD or something, you know? I mean, like, wow, okay, cool, you know? They have all this knowledge and there's probably multiple of them or they're teaching your youngin'. Okay, cool, that's a good, that's a good deal, I think. Um, that seems, seems good. Teach them all kinds of nice math stuff and science and maybe they're gonna be, you know, a doctor or something like that, something really cool. Maybe even they're teaching programming. Wow, that'd be really cool too. You know, there's a lot of just things like that, right? Um, I know that um, uh, based on, this is based on YouTube, it's research, that they have these like, uh, they work on projects. A lot of places uh, in Google, they work on projects. So you might have a project lead uh, or yeah, leadership and they'll work on something. And it's not like a, a nine to five or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm butt in seat. Okay, I'm butt in seat, you know. Even though you're working there, it's not a button seat. Okay, you're here, uh, you go to lunch at 12 o'clock and you come back. I think from what, from what I gather on YouTube, it's more of a, okay, just work on the project until you feel like you need to take a break and then take a break. And then they, you know, wi of course, Wi-Fi everywhere in the building, right? Um, and, you know, and that, it's really, it's not, I mean, really, if Google, offer me a job I I don't know I mean it depends on how much they pay right basically but I, okay I'll enter I'll enter I'd entertain it that's for sure heck yeah I mean who why not you oh you have an opportunity to go to Google what if what if Google what if Google or Facebook gave you a job right what kind of confidence would you have in yourself like wow you know because um, they don't they they don't not only have like IT jobs but they have everything, every kind of job you can think of they have. You know, facilities, maintenance, whatever, they have that type of job. Um, yeah, I'm sure they, they do. Because uh, they need service, they need someone to, um, that's like maybe it's a service oriented job, That not that IT is not, but other service oriented jobs. They'll just take care of um, take care of other things for the people that work there. Um, that's, that's, that's a job in itself right there. So. Yeah, I mean, if either one of those companies offer me a job, I mean, wow, what would, like, I think anybody really, like, wow, they offer me a job, oh my gosh, I'm like, I must be super special, because they're, I, I hear they're really picky on who they hire, right, um, so that'd be, wow, what a confidence booster, right, for anybody, really, yeah, they're, I mean, um, okay, the other thing, right, is um, your time, so they make it, you know, of course, they're um, taking your time. Basically, you're, you're working on site, but in seat. So they're going to give you some value for that. that. That's a lot. By the way, that's not all bad, by the way, if you think about it. Because just imagine other places like Chicago or St. Louis or someplace like that, for instance, right? Um, I know, for instance, in St. Louis, there's not a lot of companies to do that type of stuff. To my knowledge, it's all foreign to them. Like, oh, well... You know, it's just expected that you're going to drive an hour or whatever time based on traffic, let's say, and you're going to work somewhere nine to five and you're going to go home and you're going to do it again and you can do it five days a week. And then, and there's no other benefits besides just the fact that you work there. Okay. You take it, you know, um, they might have like a bonus or company parking or something like that, but I'm, I'm sure they're not even close to being to touching Google, no way. I know Mastercard. They're in um, they're in Missouri. I interviewed for them uh, a couple years ago, actually. And we walk in, and um, you you know you go through this scanner, right? <laughs> so you go through a scanner, right, and all that. And you're here, and you get a badge, and then uh, they take you into a room. Well, first they take you and they show you around um, the area, like they got a cafeteria, right? And I believe it's a pay for play, I wanna say. I believe that's what it was at the time. And um, they take you, anyway, they take you up in um, the little conference room thing, right? And an interview, right, and all that. And uh, right behind their complex, there is, um, there is a, um, what is it? Oh, it's a lake. There's a lake behind it. So you can see the lake and all that. I mean, that. Um, it's a beautiful campus, by the way. It's such a nice campus. Really, really nice campus. 
they're, and they're, to my knowledge, they're the only, not the only, but to my knowledge, that that's one of the places that's uh, really cool uh, in this area to work for, you know. Um, so that'd be probably it. But they don't compare to Google, no way, right? Um, so yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna go for a job and anyway, you know, and you're gonna have travel an hour anyway, right? Um, why not? Why not have a job that you travel you know, like three hours or four hours one day a week, where you work from home? Basically, like this. Let's say you live in Kansas City, Missouri, right? And you want to get a job? I don't know. Let's say Omaha, Nebraska, or, or Omaha, or Iowa. One of those. Uh, one of those places. Maybe not Iowa. Maybe Omaha, or even Topeka, Kansas, or you know wherever. Or even let's say Dallas and Austin, right? Dallas and Austin are three hours roughly, I think, apart, something like that. So you live in Austin, you know, and Austin's a nice place, by the way. Austin, Texas, that is, and. You work in you work in Dallas, and your company you, you get maybe you get paid to, uh, I don't know twenty thirty thousand more let's say right maybe forty thousand more, and that company in Dallas is um, they don't mind you work from home. So what you do is you you say okay I'm going to work for you, but you have to approve this of course, and you have to before you even get the job I think you you negotiate this you just kind of lay it out there okay this is what I want. And based on what they wanted, you know, and you can just come together. But don't say I want this. Say like, okay, um, this is what I was thinking. Like basically, what you're doing is you're writing. So key is this: write a write a piece of paper. Um, write the job description down, but write your name, like what you want out of the job, and then hand it to them. Um, because sometimes what happens is your your verbal how you say it verbally doesn't come across the same way as if they can sit down and read it you know write the job description as if this is what you want so basically like let's say it's I don't know system engineer or help that let's say help desk don't even go further than that help desk admin and then write down um, you know for instance you might put like um, working hours you know uh, working hours will consist of uh, Working from uh, working in office on site uh, Monday, uh, and then working from home Tuesday through Friday. Yeah, and then um, you know put the working hours right, something like that. And you know yeah, that's just that's a start. By the way, that's a start. So that's what I would say about that. Yeah, for it, okay. So back to the thing, right? You work in you you live in Austin, but you work in Dallas. So just maybe present to them, hey, I want to work in Dallas. I'd like to work one day a week, and so that's at three hours, right? So basically, how cool is that? So basically, that's what six hours a, a week. So if you work on a, on a sun on a Monday, and what you can do is this: you can leave on a Sunday, a Sunday night or a Sunday afternoon, let's say. And you can get an Airbnb or a hotel in the area, and they're like eighty dollars a night, let's say, right? Uh, so you figure eighty dollars a night for a hotel, and you check out of the hotel in the morning, and then you go to work, and then you leave from there to go home. So you're looking at eighty dollars a week, right? So 50, 52, let's say fifty weeks. Eight times five is forty, so four thousand dollars a year. So you're still making. If you're even making twenty thousand dollars a year extra, let's say, you're still profiting fifteen k. Or wait, I'm sorry, no, that's wrong. Twenty thousand. Sorry, you're profiting sixteen k. Excuse me. On paper, not not really, but on paper. And then, so now you think about how much time you give up. So a Sunday, um, yeah. But then also you get it back. Okay, now six hours. So that six hours is you're driving six hours back and forth right so basically monday monday and sunday and monday are pretty much that whole monday probably isn't there's no productivity for you other than maybe you can listen to podcasts on your way back from dallas yeah so if you had to work a regular job that you 
you travel one hour, let's say, that would be what? Every day two hours times five is 10 hours. So now what do you have? You have, you have six hours versus 10 hours, right? For the same type of job, but you get to go home every day. So basically those, those four hours, um, the four hours that you're giving up by working at a, a job nearby where you, where you are home every day, that four hours, what is that four hours worth to you? How much money is that worth? So let's say you make $20 an hour, whatever. Well, 20 times four is 80, $80. So that, that's the justification right there. So you're saving, uh, you're saving $80, but you're also spending it. So you kind of break even a little bit there, I guess. Uh, but you're still home Tuesday, Tuesday through Thursday, or Friday, rather. So if you could, you know, think of the other time you save as well. If you work from home one, you know, uh, four days a week. When you get up in the morning, you take the kids to school, or whatever, or in their homeschooled, let's say, and <laughs> you can be in your pajamas and work from home, you know, and you can you can wake up early, get a little work done, right, take a break, and that's another thing that you probably want to lay out in your job description is um, from 7 to 9, you can say, like, in your, in your job, your job description, 7 to 9 a.m., I'm available... I'm not available for meetings because of whatever, but at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, I'm available for meetings. 11, you know, and just put it out, really, really spell it out for them. So, because you want to, you don't want them guessing. You're, you're a new company, you want them guessing. You want to let, because they're going to decide, they're just going to make up, not make up, but they're going to like, if you don't give them like uh, how you, because they, they want, they want to know how do you work best. If you give them an idea like, okay, this person works the best this way, you're really going to do them a lot of, uh, you're going to do yourself a lot of good and uh, you're going to help them out as well because they don't know how you work. They don't know your, they don't know your mannerisms. They, most companies think people, when they come in the office, okay, eight to five or eight to four, they're working and they take the hour at lunch, but they're working the rest of the time. They don't. They don't see it any other differently. They don't see it differently. They don't. They don't understand that people don't work that way. You know, they think, oh, you should just fit. You should just fit this this mold like this or that, which doesn't work that way. You know, because some people maybe they they take a morning. They have to go to the john in the morning, uh, and you know, or whatever, and they have a certain time they do that. Well, they would know that because you would say in the in the job description you're going to give to them about the job. Usually, you know, from this time seven to nine, I'm, I can um, I'm not available on the phone, right? You can just say it that way. I'm available on the computer to do work, but I'm not available to talk to anybody on the phone. Like, for instance, like um, you could. Why? Why is that? What? What's the reason behind that? Maybe you're on the computer and it's a, you have a Wi-Fi, right? And you can take your computer anywhere with you. And um, you know, um, gosh, what a, what other thing? Or even like uh, when you're taking the kids to school, you have an iPhone, let's say. Well, you can check your email when they're dropping off the kids to school. Maybe you have it where it's audio, audio. You could like where you have a system where iPhone or read the messages to you when in your car, like urgent message. Okay, you read it, you know, something like that. So it's like, say, for instance, seven to nine, and then maybe like something like um, you tell them, say, like um, three to four, you have something else to do, and you, you spell it out for them. That way, they know, okay, this is what I can expect from the employee. I know how he or she works best because they know, because you know yourself, they don't know you, you know yourself, and you're just telling them that. So getting back to my point, um, you know, working from home and traveling and all that stuff, if, if you make a, a lot more, like how much, think of it like this, Think of draw a circle where you live and then almost like a, a ripple effect, if you will, almost like you're skipping rocks in a, in a pond 
and you know how those ripples go and go and go or you you drop a, a rock in the water and the ripple effect happens same thing you're 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 living in a certain area and how much would you need to earn to like for it to be feasible for you to work at a certain place like how much would you need to earn in your where you currently live now to say okay I'm gonna travel three hours one day a week for a job how much money do you need for that to even to make happen how much money does that make you make it sense make for instance maybe you make 10 bucks an hour uh, well you need to you need to live you know you need to make at least twelve dollars an hour uh, you know to work 30 minutes away to make it even break even for you because that's an hour you know each time that way you don't have to worry about it, it just makes it easier for you versus if you're working two minutes away how much would you need to make make 10 bucks an hour is it really worth you jumping ship to another job to, to make a dollar extra an hour because the company's like well you only get 10 we're gonna give you 11 is it really worth you like leaving your established job and your 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 credibility because when you leave a company you give up a lot of credibility because they don't know you the new company doesn't know you and what if the personalities don't um, work out what if there's you know someone who's like you know uh, a neener butt or whatever they're like ah you know they're aggressive they haven't lead led people they're a manager not a leader you know and you're like oh what's going on and you don't know if you say the wrong thing to him or her you don't know if they're sensitive if their ego is 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 sensitive you don't know the upbringing you don't know uh maybe they were just put in that position because they're the manager's uh, relative or something or the, the ceo's relative you just don't know that's you would know that if you did your homework on the company um if you if you do your homework on a company when you go from 11 or 10 dollars an hour to 11 dollars an hour then you'll be doing the same thing when you go making from 30 dollars an hour to 40 dollars an hour you're gonna be doing the same thing you know the same type of uh research for a company um, yeah, for instance, like, for instance, um, you know, for, for me, just for me, let's say me. Okay, do I want to work another place to make an extra, I don't know, 10000 a year, let's say? Uh, or can I just stay where I'm at and then I have credibility, I have uh, respect for my peers and my, my colleagues, the work is nice. Um, you know, as long as you feel like you're moving forward, I can remember, I can remember working at a place, and it was a, they did service mounting um, technology, so they did, they put chips, small little chips on these small boards, and the boards went into uh, like a device for like a CPAP device, that's like a breathing machine device thing that for people that have sleep apnea. Anyway, so this device. Uh, what I did in my job was this. My job was to take the board and test it. I have a little uh, test board thing, and I tested the board. And I remember uh, distinctly being in the lunchroom, and it was lunchtime. Now, by, by the way, this is kind of like a factory type of job, sort of. At any rate, I was in the lunchroom. Not lunchroom, it's just an open area. with you know. And, and what happened was somebody brought in... Uh, Somebody brought in donuts one time, and they were free. And I remember, I really remember this distinctly. Um, one of the guys' name, I think his name was, uh, yeah, I forget his name. Anyway, but I do remember the, I remember distinctly. I just don't remember the guy's name. Him saying, "Oh, oh, um, there were you know free donuts, right?" And then he was saying like, "Well, they don't have." Uh, something like this, or forget what it was, like sprinkles, donuts. And I remember thinking to myself, this guy is complaining about free, you know? And I was like, wow, that's amazing to me. And this, it, just the general, just, just not only him, but general tone, a lot of the folks there, would, in the lunchroom, they just talk about just nonsense stuff, dude. Like, like not talking about, like, how can we earn more money? 
How can we get a better job? How can we, how can we actually improve the company we're at now? You know, what can we do to make our lives better here? Maybe you can help the company out. I know that's probably not the way people think, but it's it's so much easier to think that way than than to think. Oh, well, maybe not for them, but for, for, in my mind, it's like let's let's think of an idea so I can do less work at work. So the company, you know, I, there's a process that we can improve. But I don't have to do this anymore. You know, that's make it simpler for me. I don't want to do this hard labor let's just make it automated how can we make it automated where I have I have less uh, I have less work to do you know yeah I remember talking to one of the folks there he was a, uh, a high-level leadership leader in the company and he was also like a uh, like a like a technical manager if you will technical or a project manager if you will I guess a project now I know it to be a project manager. Back then it was something else. But at any rate, um, I was talking to him and I said, because uh, the solder wave that we had, there was no uh, cover on the, um, there was some sort of, uh, out, uh, there was a exhaust, there was no cover on and around it to take, to, to, just, to just muffle the sound, right? And I remember talking to him about that and I said, it would be nice if you could, we had like a, a sound muffler where you could you could deaden the sound a little bit for that fan to out the fan that sucks all the air out um, for that solder wave, right? Because the solder wave uh, it's basically solder, right? It's a wave of solder, and then what it does is it solders the boards underneath it, and it's just like a conveyor-looking thing where the boards will move over it and it'll it'll solder the underneath of the board, and then it, and it has um, it's just faster that way than if you do it manually. You know, you solder uh, board manually. At any rate, he said, he goes, um, you know, if, if you don't mind, can you put that in a, a like a, a PowerPoint or a, something that I can present to the company? And I said, oh, I'm just telling you about it, you know. And and he said, oh yeah, can you can you? Just, and I, okay, you know. And I didn't have, you know, at the time I didn't, I didn't, I was like, okay, and I didn't do anything with it. You know why? Because I was like. Um, I didn't think of like, okay, that's, you know, I just thought, okay, I'd tell him and that'd be the end of it. What I didn't realize is, um, him, him telling my idea to somebody else, what he was trying to do help was he's trying to help me. He was trying to help me be a better, uh, a worker so that I could get the recognition, uh, that I need. So basically what would it have done for me had I gone to the, uh, leadership with that idea, and they say, "Oh, that's a really good idea. We should. We, we're going to implement that. Yeah, we're going to. We're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. So that would have been to me like, oh wow, my ideas are worth something. So I see that now. What he was trying to do is, he was trying to help me out by me giving him that you know the idea in a piece of, in, a, in a digital form or a piece of paper writing down or whatever, and then so he could go and show it to his management, and they could bring me in and say, yeah, this is a person with a great idea." And then I could, they could shake my hand and, you know, just say good job. And like, then my like, like, wow, I'm valued here, right? Like, you know, this, because I, I imagine that some companies have an, their ear to the ground and they know their employees like, they don't like it there or whatever, but they don't know, they don't have an idea. They don't want to like piss anybody off and tell them, hey, you guys need to create more ideas for us so we can make money. No, that, that never works. People are like, ah, uh, you know, I'm, yeah, you, you guys are taking my time. I'm not going to, you know, care about the company. Because they think like, okay, a lot of people think of companies as like, when they work there, they think like, I'm a nine to five, I'm out of here, I'm going back home. But they don't realize that if, if they, if they know a process, they can make it better. The company's going to like, really appreciate that. If they don't, they're not a good company. You know, if, if they don't appreciate that, they're not coming. Maybe work for another company. Don't don't stay there. Uh, if they're like, all ideas come from me only. You know, if you're a company and you, for instance, let me just talk to a company who's listening to this. If you're a company and and you think that your idea is the only way to do it, you're wrong. You're one thousand percent wrong. Your employees 
are the best asset you have. And on that note, thank you for viewing this episode, and have a great day.